Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to learn about command line arguments. Um, that's one of the things we're going to learn. So notice here in int main on line 27, we have an integer as the first argument and then a char star. And we haven't done pointers yet, but I'm going to go over what types of data these are. So argc these are, this is the way we do command line arguments. So argc is the number of command line arguments that we provide. That will be passed to this integer variable here, argc. So for example, if we ran our program as dot forward slash uh, program, if that was the name of our program, and we had some command line arguments like high space by um, you know and then it doesn't matter we could have more um, like world for example doesn't matter what indices are these 0 1 2 3 so in this case oops arg c would be 4 okay so there's one, two, three, four. Obviously, we can't start. We start counting from zero. So there's four arguments here. So in this case, arg c right here would be a four. Now, what's arg v? Well, um, this is actually arg v is of type char star which is actually a character pointer. However, it's actually a C string, which is a character array. But notice here, these square brackets, it's an array of character arrays. So if you think of it like this, okay, so if I make kind of like a box here, if it's an array of character arrays, then the first index 0, 1, 2, 3, this would be P, R, O, like that. This one would be high, this one would be by, and this one would be world. See? So how do we access these guys? Well, we can access them um, simply by, like for example, this one would be argv zero, right? And high would be argv one. It's an array, okay? And it's an array of character uh, arrays. So you could think of it in some sense. You could think of it as a vector of strings, but it's not a vector, but it behaves kind of similarly. So, for example, if we wanted to use it to open a file, so in this case, argv1, this one, might be a file name that we'd like to open. So you could, you know, you could run your program as dot, oops, dot forward slash program, and then you could type in the file name and the file name here would be argv1. Okay? By the way, um, this, this dot forward slash thing, if you're on Windows and you're scratching your head saying, what is that? Um, that's a Linux thing. And if you, if you create a binary executable in Linux, uh, you have to, and if it's in your home directory, you have to type dot forward slash in front of it to run it. That's explicitly stating that the program is, uh, exists in the current directory. Okay. So let's take a look at this code and let's see what it's doing here. So here we open up argv1 and we're using dot open instead of actually using it on creating it 
like um, opening the file on line 34 where we instantiate the uh, uh, the constructor of the um, input file stream and we've gone kind of gone through this before but we're going through the file and we're going to sort it and of course remember it's going to sort because we've overloaded the less than operator for the person and it's a because it's a vector of persons and then we can sort it and now notice here this is argv2 so that's also going to be a file name so if you think about how we're going to run this we're going to have another file name here and this is going to be v 2 and this is the, going to be the file that we read from and this is the file that we're going to write to. So in this case we're basically storing or, or writing the vector after it's been sorted uh, to the output file. So let's see if we can run this and, and see what it looks like. Okay, so I think I had my data. Okay, and let's get rid of new data so it's not there. And now let's run the program. So we'll, I think it's actually already compiled, and this is, uh, this is file IO4. So we'll go dot forward slash file IO4 and we'll say my data and we'll write it to new data dot text and okay so there's remember three arguments that's including the file name right so 0 1 2 which is a length of 3 and so now when we look at new data well actually let's look at my well, yeah we can see my data right up here and there's new data after it's been sorted based on the age. Okay? So nothing new here that we haven't already kind of gone over except for the command line arguments. Okay? So this is the only new thing that's added to this program is our ability to explicitly state command line arguments. Okay, so we're on to the next example. In this one, we've got a program that has two functions, and the two functions are uh, vector to file, which will, will take a vector from memory and store it into a file. And there's the code for it. Pretty straightforward, right? We create an output file stream, and we iterate over it write everything to f out which is the output file and then close and return true and the other one is the other function is a file to vector so in this case we're reading so we can put some comments in here so there's our comments write vector to a file and then line by line right and then this one is uh, read a file and return a vector line by line. So in this one we just create a vector of strings and the other one um, so let's just notice though how we're passing stuff okay here we're going to be um, passing two arguments the vector and the file name. Here's a here's a question. Are we modifying this vector? The, the variable name is s. Are we modifying it? It doesn't look like it. What we're doing here is we're actually iterating through the vector and writing the elements of the vector to the output file. So therefore, why are we copying the vector when we pass it to the function? We don't need to be. Because 
you know, what if the vector is super long? Do we need to expand the CPU cycles in order to copy the vector when all we're going to do is iterate through it and not modify it? Listen, if we're not going to modify it, then a better thing to do is pass it not only by reference for performance reasons, but now be careful now because if you pass it by reference and you accidentally modify it, well, we don't want to modify it. We don't need to modify it. So let's also specify const. And so what this is going to do is it's going to do two things. One, we're going to get the performance benefits of passing by reference. And we're going to get the safety of using const. In other words, we are um, not making a copy. And therefore, let's specify const to say, OK, we don't want to be able to change it either. So this is both fast and safe. File name I'm not too concerned about because it's just a string. And it's just one string. It, I don't really care if we copy it by value. Um, so this is good and great. Okay, so in this case, in the second case, when we um, read from the file, we're going to pass just the file name and we're going to return, in this case we're returning a vector here on line 30. So again, we just in, you know, declare a few variables, uh, open up the file for reading with an input file stream, it, and um, call get line on that input file stream, push it back into the vector repeatedly until we're done, and return the vector. That's it. So now now we can go back and here I'm using argv1, the command line argument, to open up the, the file. Or sorry, not open up the file. I'm calling file to vec. So essentially all I'm doing here is I'm calling this function here and I'm reading from the file name, f name, and that's going to return a value. And that's why I have an assignment operator here. And I'm going to directly assign that to food, which is my string vector that I'm uh, constructing right here on line 36. Okay. Now what I do is I go into a, an infinite loop, and I ask for groceries to buy. So just think for a minute, there's already going to be whatever was in that file is now going to be in my food vector. And now I go into a, a kind of an infinite loop and I push back grocery items into the same vector, so on the end. And when, I'm, when I've typed in quit, I'll break out of this infinite loop. And then I'm going to iterate over my food vector and print out all the items that I need to purchase. Okay, And once that's done, I'm going to store all of those files. I'm going to save that vector back into the same file name. OK? OK, let's try running this. So first things first, let's compile it. OK, so here I am compiling it with all warnings. And I think I misspelled actually file IO. There we go. That should be better. OK, so, so no warnings. It compiled perfectly fine. And now let's take a look what I have in uh, groceries.txt. So I've got um, apples, bread, milk, eggs. And so let me run this program, file.io5, and I'll go groceries.txt. And so now I'll say I want to also buy uh, a melon. I also want to buy butter. 
and I also want to buy um, meat. Okay, and I'll go quit now. And so, oh, notice that there's a space there. So um, let me fix that. I think I put a space at the end of the file, which I didn't need to. So let's go, um, let's modify groceries. Get rid of that space. And that was created not by the program, but, but when I created the file manually. So now let me run the program again. And I'll pick some more things to buy. How about some cheese and some oranges? OK. And I'll go quit. So now you can see that it's working properly. And uh, there's no spaces in it. But essentially, I can. it gets saved every time. Because now if I go cat groceries, you'll see that or cheese and orange is, is now in there. So it continually adds to the list of things that, um, that, that are already there. So essentially, I have taken the code and created functions out of the reading and the writing to a file. And um, I think that makes it a little bit nicer to use in the in the program because the because my I'm using it here and here there's the my right okay okay in our next example here we're going to take a look at the uh, air catching facilities in uh, in C++. Now Python has try accept and C++ has try catch. So let's take a look at how this works. And this type of stuff is handy for dealing with files. You'll see why in a minute. So here I have the same program. Um, in this case, well it's slightly different actually. It's not quite the same. Uh, all we're doing here is we're just going to create a vector um, of three elements, three strings, all of them uh, created or instantiated to hello test. And we will create a file name called from command line argument and we're going to take that vector and put it into a file and if it's and if it successfully saves it if it returns true then we'll print out file successfully saved and if it if it's not saved properly then it'll say file unable to save or maybe we should say file um, not saved. Or maybe we should say error file not saved. Or maybe we, let's just say file not saved. There. Um, now that's just for a pause. That's just getting a character. And then afterwards we will then once it's saved then we'll do the opposite and we'll open the file and return a vector and assign it to new vect here, a s string vector. And then if that returns true, then we'll say success. Okay? And if it returns false, then we'll say failure. How about we say we, we change that? How about we'll go failure um, to read file? Okay. Um, we can also perhaps 
maybe me, me be more specific and um, we could say uh, like this. So here, being more specific, we just said that failure to read file, file n, which was the string that we, um, we tried to save to, because we're saving to it here, file to vector on line 61. OK, so let's try compiling this. And it compiles fine. There's no errors. And let's try running this. And let's just see, let's just allow it to work properly and not have any errors. So we'll go dot forward slash uh, file IO 6. And let's call it output. File saved successfully. And notice I had to hit enter there again, so it did stop. So I'll do it again. Notice if I don't touch anything now, it's hanging right now. And it's hanging on line 58. So that line 58 is blocking because it's a cn.get. It's waiting to accept a character with dot .get. So I just hit enter, and it'll unblock. And it, it does see out okay, what was in the file. But I mean, if I now cat what's in the file, I should see it as well. Okay, And so there's the success. You, you could see the line that says success, and then what's in the file. OK? However, how can we test to see if our code is, um, if, if the try catch part of the code works? So in other words, we have to force an error. How are we going to do that? Well, what I thought we would do is perhaps I have a, uh, oops, let's try this better. That, OK. I have a directory called test. So if I take a look at the directory called test, you can see the file permissions there on the left. Um, but I guess file permissions, teaching you file permissions on Linux is a bit beyond the scope of this course. However, you can learn a little bit about Linux file permissions. So. I'm going to change the permissions of that directory such that it's going to be impossible for me to create a file in it. So what I'm going to do is I'll go trimod, which stands for a change mode, and then I'll, I'll just say uh, something like four, uh, and then I'll go zero, zero, and then test. So now, you notice that it's the permissions are gone. I, I'm not able to write to that directory at this point. The RWX stands for write, read, write, and execute. But execute privileges on a directory is actually um, like listing the directory. So even if I if I try going ls test now. Uh, it should say permission denied. I, I can't even take a look at what's inside of it. So let's see now if I can put the file in there. Obviously, I cannot. But let's just try anyways with C++ and let's see how it fails. So I'll go file IO6, and then I'll go test, and then I'll go output. And so now it says error code 1. And so that error code, file not saved, um, that is coming from, so if we come down here to what's happening first, um, this is failing. This vec2 file is returning false. Because I said it's it's saying file not safe. So let's go to vec2 file. Here's vec2 file. Okay. And notice 
that it's also printing out error code 1. So this printed out, and we re therefore we return false. Now, what was the error code? It was a 1. So if you notice here, we're going to try and create the output file stream based on the file name. And in the file name, I've provided the path here. right? So if you notice the way I ran this, this was my file name. So it's a relative file name. It's the directory and then the file name. And that's what this argument is here. But importantly, fout.good, it's not good. So that not fout.good becomes true. And therefore, I throw my um, I throw one. It's very tempting for me to say throws an exception because it's like Python vocabulary. But I throw error one, and now this catch catches it, and it prints out error code 1 and it returns false so the function finishes I don't get to return true okay so now if I remember where it's stopped right now it's still stopped on um, line 58 on the pause so now if I hit enter it throws error code 1 again and that is actually for file to vec, line 61. So when we go to f file to vec here, we can't open the file for reading either. And so that's still not good. Again, if we throw one, catch it, and say error code one again. OK? And then because this returns false, now the else kicks in and it says failure to read file. And, and then we print out the file name. Okay? Now, if I did this again, but this time, let's try uh, changing the mode. So if we go LL test, dash D stands for directory. And if I, if I change mode, back to something that is um, going to be reasonable to read and write. Now you can see my permissions are back and so if I run this again with the same directory, same file name, no problems now and so everything works as it should. OK, so that's kind of the end of uh, file input output. And uh, next class, um, we'll start a new topic. See you next time.